Welcome back to Gold Fries. In this video, we'll be looking at the difference between a B560 and a B460 motherboard when using an Intel processor. But that aside, this is also a review of the ASRock B560 Steel Legend. So let's go into the details of this board first. I'm not going to go into details like USB ports and whatever that you have seen on their product page, but I will highlight the difference between this and the B460 Steel Legend. Appearance-wise, you see that the bottom here does not have a cover for the M.2 slot, which I think is good. After all, having a slot there, when you want to install drives with, let's say, a heatsink, well, it's there. There's a huge piece over this place. While this one, on the other hand, it's open for you to install, let's say, a drive like someone's, like, like some from the XPG models that they have RGB LED. It'll work just fine. It won't be in... Um, conflict with the graphics card and you have the main slot here that has heatsink. Uh, VRM heatsinks, the 460 is a little bit bigger but I guess it's okay being a B560 board you typically be using with an i5 or an i7 processor not going to go into much into overclocking and then for those of you who are interested the VRM is of 8 plus 2 plus 2 Dr. Mo's power phase and it uses a Vichy SIC654 50 amp MOSFET. The RGB LED on the B560 Steel Legend is limited but it looks nice. Just that there's no RGB LED on the heatsink at the top which I don't mind at all. It's just a pity that the beautiful Steel Legend text will be blocked by the power supply cable once everything is in place. And then when it comes to the design, I'm glad that ASRock actually improve the board because like the B460 steel legend here you see that it's cut off over here over the sides here and this means that you are unable to mount screw on this part and also on this part which is a compromise when it comes to keeping the board non to be like not flexing you know when you don't mount here and here and you attach the power supply cable and all that it may bend the PCB I like it that um, they've done away with that. I mean, that design has been around since their 300 series board, so I, what I remember. However, with this one, it's back to normal, which is, I think it's great that ASRock woke up, came to their senses. And last but not least, the B560 board is the key feature, I mean, is that you are able to now load the XMP for the memory. This is what the B460 board looks like. There's no XMP for you to load, you can choose the speed, you have to manually time, uh, change the timings, not all that good, you're stuck with 2666. However, on a B560 board, this is what it is, you are able to load the XMP. So overall, I can tell you that this is a great board and I'm giving it a go bash. Now let's dive into the performance of which I'm using the Intel 10th generation, of course. I do not have an 11th generation um, non-K models. So I'm going to use the 10th generation. It, work, it works just fine. After all, the 10400F is very popular. So that's the model I'm using. For the benchmark, I went with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p at the highest setting. And I'm only using one game as Shadow of the Tomb Raider is sensitive to the changes on CPU and memory settings. The benchmark is done using MSI Afterburner of which I recorded the stats like average and 1% lows. Using the highest speed memory, you get so much more performance boost. And this is using an RTX 3080. Of course, that's not to say you're going to be pairing the i5 with the RTX 3080. And also, I must highlight that that performance you see is not the maximum that you can get from the RTX 3080, of which I will cover that in a video next week. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as I'll be sharing to you why you shouldn't be using an i5 10400F with an RTX 3080. Now back to the topic of uh, what we're covering today. Let's look at the performance when it comes to using DaVinci Resolve to make a video, a 1080p 3-minute video. And here's the performance difference. Again, the one with the higher speed memory does give performance improvement. So overall, if you are getting a i5, i7 processor, do go with the B560 board. In this case, the B460 Steel Legend was retailing at RM575. And right now, this one retails at around 
RM610, just a bit of difference, but you get a lot of performance boost from that. Over there in the US, your pricing should be about 129 US for the B560 Steel Legend, I guess. Well, overall, yeah, good board. And if you're getting, uh, I'm repeating myself, if you're getting a 10th generation or 11th generation, let's say i5 or i7 non-K processors, go with the B560 motherboard. So you get the to use the memory, you get to load the XMP and get the best out of whatever you have spent on. Alright, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.